Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. Today we're gonna continue on with a new player series, and today I'd like to talk about the trading post and the gem store. Now in previous guides, I have talked about these a little bit, but I haven't talked about either of these systems in any kind of detail, and I feel like that could be beneficial for people who are just starting out playing Guild Wars 2. For those of you guys who have come from other MMOs, the trading post is essentially the auction house from any other MMO, but if you haven't even played another MMO, the auction house or trading post for Guild Wars 2 is a place where you can buy and sell items with all other players across all other servers. To access the trading post, you just need to press O and navigate down to the third tab on the left hand side. On the top left, you can see how much gold you currently have on your account, and just below that there is an option to get some more gold but we'll talk about that a little bit later. To the right of your gold you'll see a few tabs that you can cycle between and these are things like home, buy items, sell items, and my transactions. For this video we're just going to focus on sell items and my transactions as I feel like these are the most useful. Home and buy items can pretty much be bypassed just by typing in the item you actually want or searching for it in the lower left column with all those categories. So for sell items, that actually just brings up all the items in your inventory that you can currently sell and it'll show you how much those sell for. And if you're still waiting on a transaction to go through, you can look at your transactions for things you're buying or selling and you can see how those are doing. If you've recently bought any items off the trading post or you've sold any items for any kind of gold, you can see that down in the lower left hand corner of the UI. It'll show you a gold value, but if you click the little arrow, you will see any items that you've also purchased. For the most part, you'll spend the majority of your time in the trade post, either cycling through the categories on the left hand side, or just outright typing in the name of whatever it is you're looking for. So if you're looking for a crafting material or something you already know the name of, it's as simple as typing it in the search bar and seeing what comes up. There is no leniency for spelling errors, so make sure that you've spelled the name of the item right or it won't pop up. But let's say you're looking for something like armor or weapons that you're trying to purchase and you're not quite sure what you're looking for or you can't quite remember the name of the stats that you'd like on those items, well, that's where those categories come into play. So let's say we're looking for some new boots, but we're really not sure about the stat combination or anything like that. Let's go ahead over to armor and then down to boots. Clicking on boots is going to bring up a list of a ton of boots that are being sold on the trading post. And what you might not notice at first is these are actually filtered by your profession. Now this is a default setting and it can be changed if you're currently playing say a guardian and you want to get some gear for like a mesmer or something else. There are a lot of ways to filter your search results and before we get into how to really get into the nitty gritty let's just talk about some of the basic ways you can filter these items. So at the very top of the list you'll notice that they're separated by quantity, item, level, and price. Clicking on these is actually going to sort this entire list by the quantity, item, level, or price. You're really only going to want to sort by quantity if you're trying to buy a lot of a particular item. Clicking item will sort the list alphabetically, and this helps if you know what the item's called but you're not quite sure of the spelling. And level and price will just sort it accordingly, and that can be helpful if you only have so much money to put in on a certain character or if you're trying to upgrade some of the gear on a character that's less than level 80. Now, filtering your searches this way can be pretty beneficial depending on what you're looking for, but as I said earlier, there's a better way to do this. Just to the right of the search field, you'll see a cog. Clicking this will bring down a drop down that gives you a whole lot more ways to further customize exactly what you're looking for. You'll notice that here we have three fields for attributes and that'll actually let you just outright pick the stats that you want for any given item, even if you don't know the name of those stats. Just below that, you should see the name of your current profession, and this is actually how we can change this to any other profession or armor type. Below that, you can actually sort by rarity for the item you're looking for, and below that, if you'd like to set up a range of levels for any particular item, you can do that here. For ultimate convenience, you can press the match my level button to the right of the level range, and it'll do exactly that. So if you're a level 80 character and you're tired of seeing all the loot 
loot in the game popping up, you can click that button and it'll take a lot of that away. And even though I don't really recommend using the trade post to gear yourself up while leveling, this because the core story is gonna give you plenty of gear as you're leveling up, but if you're in the process of leveling and you just aren't doing enough damage, this could really help you find a few upgrade items very quickly so that you could continue playing. Now, so far, all we've done is look at some armor, but if you go through any of these other categories, the filter options will change accordingly. So if you click on, say, crafting materials and bring down that cog again, you'll see that we can now sort by the crafting discipline that those items belong to. The trading post is a pretty great way to get basically anything that is an account bound in Guild Wars 2. Everything from armor, weapons, sigils, runes, mini pets, dyes, Food, bag, crafting materials, crafting components, you name it, and it's pretty much on the trade post. That is, again, unless it's account bound for obvious reasons. So now you know how to use the trading post to, at the very least, search for some items you already know about, and if not, you can filter a category to the extent that it's going to show you some items that you could buy. However, when you buy and sell items, you are presented with a bit more UI than we've seen so far, and I feel like I should probably explain this because not everything is immediately clear when you're first starting out. So the way the trade post works is players will put items on the trading post for set value. Values. Clicking on an item brings up a bit of UI that'll show you all kinds of information, but what you might be gravitated towards mostly is the buy instantly button. Clicking this button will immediately take your gold and give you the item that you'll then have to pick up at the trade post, which is nice, convenient, and fast, but as you might have already realized, there's probably another method that allows you to save a little bit of money. So if you look at the bottom left corner of this UI, you should see the portion that says current buyers, then it says ordered, and there are a list of orders. These are players who chose this item just like you did. But instead of the max value that it defaults to, players typed in a value they were more comfortable paying. These are called buy orders, and while you'll have to wait a bit longer for those items to sell because they won't be at that max price, you can use this method to save yourself quite a bit of gold depending on the item you're trying to purchase. To make sure that you're next in line for the item that's being sold, first just click on the top listing in the current buyers. You'll notice that the price of the item has now changed to match that listing, and from here you just want to increase the price ever so slightly so that you're first in that list. Now there's nothing stopping other players from coming in and doing the same thing to you, but once their items sell you'll again be next in line. Now we can talk about selling items which actually work about the same way. In the trade post, just click on that sell items tab I mentioned earlier, and you'll see everything in your inventory. Here again, I'm just gonna pick some random item to demonstrate this. You can see the UI here is pretty much the same, only we get a button that says sell instantly instead. Clicking sell instantly is going to sell your item and put that gold into the trade post for you to pick up. But again, maybe there's a way that you could get a little bit more money for the items you're selling. If you look this time at the bottom right of this UI, you'll see current sellers. Just like before, you wanna click the top listing and instead of increasing this value, you'll want to decrease it ever so slightly. This again, of course, to make sure that your item sells before anybody else. This is called listing an item, and just like with the buy order, you will have to wait for someone to purchase the item at this price. But if you don't mind waiting on these items to sell, you could end up getting yourself some more gold. So now that I've explained buy orders and listing items, you probably understand how the buy and sell instantly buttons work. Buying an item instantly is going to purchase that item for the lowest listed price, and selling an item instantly is going to sell that item for the highest buy order price. Whether you're buying or selling an item on the trade post, you should compare the current buyers and current sellers because a lot of times there's a pretty big gap between the two prices. That being said, if you should ever notice that these prices are about the same, then it's probably okay to use the buy or sell instantly options. 
Whenever you place a buy order or list an item on the trade post, you can check the current status of those items by clicking the My Transactions portion of the trade post. Anything that shows up here is still waiting to be bought or sold, and if an item ever sits on here for too long, you can always just cancel it to get your items or gold back. As a rule of thumb, if an item ever sits on the trade post for longer than a week, I usually cancel and then relist it or if I'm super impatient, press those buy or sell instantly buttons. Because players are constantly buying and selling items on the trade post, the prices of items do tend to fluctuate, and most of the time, if you find an item isn't being sold or you can't purchase an item for a certain price, just compare it to the current price of that item and make adjustments. For selling items specifically, there are sort of taxes in the game that you should probably be aware of. Firstly, if you should list an item to be sold, there is a 5% fee that you'll have to pay, and that's 5% of the total value of the item you're currently listing. Additionally, there's an exchange fee, and this happens to anybody who sells anything on the trade post. The exchange fee is an additional 10%. So if you're listing an item, you're essentially giving up 15% of that item's total value. Now, while selling an item, if you look just to the left of the total price of that item, you will see the listing fee and exchange fees shown clearly, so just make sure to pay attention to those if this is a route you're trying to go. The method in which you buy or sell items is going to vary based on the item, the list price, how much gold you have, so many variables play into this, but I did want to make this more known for the new players coming into this game because it's sort of a meme that new players just buy and sell instantly, and I wanted to try and explain this for you guys so that you could better understand how to get the most out of the trade post. Also worth mentioning as a bit of a side note from all of this is that you can actually just right click items out of your inventory and you'll get an option to buy or sell those on the trade post. This means that you will need to return to an actual trading post vendor to pick up any items in the game, but if you're out in the world and you have way too much stuff in your inventory, even after depositing your collectibles in your bank, you can still sell stuff on the go to free up your inventory space and keep playing the game. Off of the trade post though, we could talk about the gem store for a little bit. This won't be a detailed overview of everything currently in the gem store. Rather, I'd like to point out some of the convenience items that you can pick up here. So if you've exited out of the trade post, just hit O again and it'll bring that UI back up. The gem store is actually the default for this, so you don't need to click on any tabs or anything like that. And while the gem store is separated into several categories, I'm just going to cover a few of the items I think are most worth your money or gold, as we'll find out here in a second. I'll just be searching these outright in the top left search field, but there are tons of items on this store, so be sure to check it out if you don't mind spending a couple bucks on the game. First up, we have the Copper Fed Salvage O Matic. This is a salvage kit that essentially will just infinitely salvage things out of your inventory for a little bit of copper each time. Now the convenience here is pretty obvious because as we all know, everyone's favorite part of the game is going back to get more salvage kits, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll never need another salvage kit again, as I really wouldn't recommend using this on anything rare or higher. This because it's a fantastic basic salvage kit that never runs out of uses, but if you're trying to get the most out of salvaging some higher level stuff, you're just not gonna get that out of the copper fed salvage omatic Next up from that, we have the unbreakable or unlimited gathering tools. These never run out of uses, very much like the copper fed salvage matic And additionally, these have cool skins and sometimes animations when being used. Also, if you caught my recent video, you know that these now are part of a glyph system. This meaning that if your gathering tool has any other kind of special effect, you can now strip that effect and apply it to any other gathering tool in the game. Additionally, the skins that you get from these are now part of the wardrobe system so you can reskin any gathering tool you like as long as you don't mind giving up a transmutation charge to do that. Off of that though there are a few items that sort of all fall into the same category so I'll just list those off real quick. We have the bag slot expansion which as I've said before will allow you to slot more bags. The bank tab expansion which will just actually add a whole new section of slots in your bank and the storage expander which is going to increase how many collectibles you can deposit in your bank. 
By default, you can only hold about 250 of each item, but each time you purchase one of these, it will increase by another 250. Additionally, there's some MMO staple items, I'll call them, or items that I see in pretty much every other MMO that I've ever tried. Things like additional character slots, a makeover kit so that you can completely reskin your character, however you cannot change your race. But outside of these items, I really can't recommend a whole lot for you guys because it's going to come down to what you want out of this gem store. Still, I hope that helped you guys at least narrow it down to some of the more useful, we'll say, items out of the gem store, the rest being mostly cosmetic or just for a bit of fun. To purchase the gems themselves, you can use your money by pressing the buy gems button in the top left. Here you'll be prompted to enter in your card information and you can do it that way. Or if you go down to the second tab of this UI, you will see what looks like sort of an infinity symbol with two arrows. And this is the currency exchange. Now this is where you can take gems that you just bought with money and convert those into gold. Or this is where you could take your hard earned gold and turn it into gems so that you can never spend money on Guild Wars 2 if you don't want to. How much gold and gems are worth is based on a player economy, much like the trade post, so these values will change over time. And more than anything, I believe this system is just put in place to prevent gold sellers from filling up all the chats in Guild Wars 2. There's a whole conversation to be had about whether this makes parts of Guild Wars 2 pay to win or not, but this really isn't the video for all of that. Anyway guys, I just hope that this guide helped you kind of understand how the trade post works, how the gem store could be beneficial if you so desire to spend the money or the gold, and if you prefer to use gold over your own money, like many probably do, you now know how to convert that into gems. But anyway guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.